Good morning. My name is Zachary Baker Rhodes. A warm welcome to Church of the Ascension and St. Agnes. A special welcome to those who join us via our live stream. We are all one in prayer. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, and our celebrant and preacher is our rector, Father Dominique Peridans, and assisting is our deacon, Mary McHugh. A few reminders, Holy Communion is distributed in, in all three aisles, starting with the side aisles. Please follow the directional lead of the ushers. Offerings, donations may be placed in basins located in front of the first pews before receiving communion. At the end of Mass, we request that fellowship conversations take place outdoors. Thank you for your attention. Our liturgy will begin shortly.
Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan, make it speed to help thy servants, who are assaulted by manifold temptations. And as thou knowest our several infirmities, let each one of us find thee mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ suffered for his sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to them. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. Exactly a century ago, 1921, before any of us were born, was born Betty June Thurnberg in Battle Creek, Michigan. Her father abandoned her shortly after her birth, and in 1937, she and her mother received a telegram informing them that her father had committed suicide. Betty's earliest memory, breaking spontaneously into song at the age of three to distract a drunken man threatening to beat up her mother at the blind pig pub she ran. At age nine, Betty quit school to sing on street corners to raise money. Her mother was an alcoholic. One evening at a Charlie Chaplin silent film with her mother, she thought, you know, I will be a star and my mother will stop drinking. 
1950. Betty Hutton, as she was known on stage and in film, got the starring role in Annie Get Your Gun, replacing Judy Garland. Success. But the road ahead was not to be smooth. 1967, a turning point. Firing by Paramount Pictures, death of her manager, death of her mother by fire, bankruptcy. 1969, death of her dear friend Garland from a drug overdose. 1970, loss of her singing voice, nervous breakdown, attempted suicide. 1971, at age 50, after four failed marriages and a wrecked career, homelessness. All she had was a shopping bag with a few things in it, said the executor of her estate. Worth $10 million, at one point she was broke and broken. Uppers and downers to soften the edge eventually led her to a re rehabilitation hospital in Boston, weighing only 85 pounds. And there, on the verge of entirely giving up, she noticed a priest, Father Peter McGuire, pastor of St. Anthony's Parish in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. He too had come to the hospital, not for himself, but to check in his cook, Pearl. Betty later found out from Pearl who this intriguing man was, this compelling presence. And one thing led to another, and she eventually found Father Peter. And she found employment in his rectory where for five years she cooked and cleaned. It was her time of recovery. And in the humble process, she says, she, quote, found Christ in her heart. In September of 1980, fast forward a couple of years, she returned to Broadway one last time for a two-week stint as Miss Hannigan in Annie. Estranged from her children, her grandchildren came to see her. And in the program, as is custom, all of the actors had long biographies, save one, Betty Hutton. Under her photograph, there were only seven words. I am back, thanks be to God. She died March the 12th, 2007. If we're honest, we all go astray and wander either inwardly in self-absorption or outwardly in very distracting, sometimes demeaning things. But with the grace bestowed during Lent, each of us in our own way can say, I am back. Thanks be to God. We can say this because grace gives us God's love already victorious. The victory is revealed quite nicely in this very terse gospel passage. Jesus is baptized, the heavens open, and a voice reveals him as the beloved and therefore our beloved, my beloved and your beloved. Divine love fills. Jesus is then immediately driven by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he is tempted by Satan. St. Gregory, 6th century Bishop of Rome, says, It was not unworthy of our Redeemer to wish to be tempted who came also to be slain in order that by his temptations he might conquer our temptations, just as by his death he overcame our death. 
divine love conquers. Jesus then, as we read, comes to Galilee, proclaiming the kingdom of God has come near. Divine love touches. This gospel at the beginning of Lent, this first Sunday, is a source of hope. For it indeed reminds us that God's love is already victorious. There are no obstacles to God if we do not want. And when we are tempted not to love, which for me is probably every 15 minutes, our beloved Jesus, in whom we experience the kingdom of God, who in a sense is the kingdom of God, is right there with us. As St. Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, God gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus tells us, however, that we must repent and believe in the good news. To repent is to experience deep regret for wrongdoing and to turn our hearts towards our Lord whom we have wronged. To believe is to yield with a sense of awe. So let us acknowledge as we begin this sacred journey that is Lent, the times that we have not welcomed the victory of Christ's love, especially in loving others. And let us surrender to him. This is the grace of Lent, Jesus' gift, which makes this possible. We don't do this heroically. We do this trustingly. So let us dare to hope. And let us each in our own way this day say, I am back. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us all and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, that the Spirit may lead us during this Lenten season to a fuller life in Christ, faithful to our baptismal commitment, and generously serving those in need, let us pray to the Lord and the mercy. For healing of divisions within the human family, that God's covenant will inspire us toward greater cooperation and unity as we strive to overcome disease, malnourishment, violence, and prejudice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Pray, beloved, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice by hand. Praise the Lord Jesus' name. Both of our benefits and that of all of His holy church. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks unto Thee for the goodness and love which Thou hast revealed unto us in creation, in the calling of Israel as Thine own people, in Thy Word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Thy Son, Jesus Christ. For in the fullness of time Thou didst send Him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him Thou hast delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before Thee. In Him Thou hast brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks unto thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, 
do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And according to his command, O Father, we offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, presenting unto thee from thy creation, O Lord of all, this bread and this cup. We beseech thee, gracious Father, to send thy Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to thy Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And at the last day, Put all things in subjection under thy Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Agnes, Francis, and all thy saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as Jesus our Savior teaches and enables us together, we are hopeful to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank, thank Thee for feeding you. us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Thy Son and heirs of Thine eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work Thou hast given us to do, to love and serve Thee as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to thee, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a couple of announcements. First of all, welcome to those who are visiting. Thank you for blessing us with your presence as we begin this Lenten journey. If you have not received the Lenten trifold, it's a violet trifold with all that we have during the Lenten season for you to grow in holiness. There are some on the table as you exit. Please take some. If you'd like more, if you'd like to take a couple for friends, please do so. We are in need of people to sign up for the March Sundays for Sandwiches in the City, which is our new ministry every Sunday from 12.30 to 1.30 right outside the church here, distributing a minimum of 50 lunches. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. And also this Wednesday, we begin our four-part Lenten lecture series entitled Death, Life, and Eternal Life. So please take a note of that. It is via Zoom, Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. You will also find available, published last Friday and the next two Fridays, a brief video series by MJ or Molly Jane, our seminarian, on the book of Ruth, which is available on our YouTube channel, which you probably didn't realize we have, the Church of the Ascension and St. Agnes YouTube channel. So take another trifold with you if need be. Thank you for being here. Let us pray. Grant, most merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 